Shalom, and welcome to all the colors of the rainbow. Today we're going to talk about the color blue. The color blue in modern Hebrew is kachol, and it appears, this root appears one time in Ezekiel 2340. And furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from far, unto whom a messenger was sent, and lo, they came, for whom thou didst wash thyself, painted thy eyes, and deckest thyself with ornaments. And so the word that's translated painted, to have painted your eyes, is this word kachol, which means in modern Hebrew, blue. It comes from a cosmetic, which is widely used uh, in the Middle East and the, in the uh, Far East also which is in English called coal or kahol, sometimes it's spelled K-O-H-O-L. And it's applied inside the eyelids. It's made either from ground antimony or galena. It's a ground up mineral and placed inside the eyes. And it is thought to um, ward off the evil eye for one thing, but also to heal from diseases and to protect from the sun. Uh, it is worn by men even to this day. Uh, I've seen on some bulletin boards uh, from uh, Afghani people talking about whether men still should or should not wear coal, and there are places where they do. Of course, it's worn by women. It's placed on children to protect their eyes, as we said, and also by all fashionable pirates. The common word in uh, Tanakh, which means blue, is tchelet. I'm sure you've already studied a great deal about this uh, color. Exodus 25.3. And this is the offering which you shall take of them, gold and silver and brass and blue, this is the tchelet, and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shittim wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing and for sweet incense onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate and let them make me a sanctuary that i may dwell among them so everything which is considered to be made out of blue all the embroidery which is involved with the sanctuary is defined by this color tchelet. when the sanctuary is on the move there are several things that are covered by a cloth of Tchelet. Numbers 4, 5. And when the camp setteth forth, Aaron shall come, and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil, and cover the ark of the testimony with it, and shall put thereon the covering of badger skins, or whatever animal that is, that Tachash animal, and shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue, holy of Tchelet, and shall put in the staves thereof, and upon the table of showbread they shall spread a cloth of blue and put there on the dishes and the spoons and the bowls and covers to cover withal and the continual bread shall be and they shall take a cloth of blue and cover the candlestick of the light and his lamps and his tongs and his snuff dishes and all the oil vessels thereof wherewith they minister unto and upon the golden altar shall they spread a cloth of blue and cover it with a covering of badger skins and shall put to the staves thereof. The other thing, which you know uh, is consistently made from this color, tchelet, is the uh, fringes and the tzitzit. Numbers 15, 38. Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Yahweh and do them that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. Now in all the time that I was growing up I never saw a single strand of blue in any tzitzit that were attached to a talit. And the reason for this is that it is said that the definition of the animal where the tchelet comes from, where the dye comes from, uh, was completely lost. And the recipe is completely lost uh, over the
these many years. Now it seems open to debate whether the uh, species has been found and the chelet can actually be made again according to rabbinic. The name of the animal is called chilazon, and much has been written about it uh, in rabbinical writings. It is said that the uh, body is the color of the sea, that its form is the form of a fish, that it uh, comes back to life or it comes in proliferation maybe only 70 years um, or maybe only once in seven years, um, that the dye is made from its blood, which is why it is very expensive. Some people say it can only be found on the shores of the Mediterranean in the portion of the tribe of Zvalun, which is up near uh, Rosh Hanikra. Uh, other people say, no, it's actually a fish, and it lives in uh, Yam HaMelech in the Dead Sea. Other of the requirements concerning the Tehillah, it is that it may not be made from any plant product. And there is a plant, the Indigo Ferra Tinctoria, which uh, the color of the real tehillet from the uh, animal exactly resembles the color from the indigo plant uh, so closely that, in fact, only the father can distinguish between them. But it is not allowed to use the plant to make the indigo. Um, it is also said that the dye must be permanent. So all these parameters, as people have begun over the past probably uh, 150 years to begin to think, well, what is this thing? Somebody said it was a kind of um, squid, and we know squids have ink, but that color apparently was not uh, very permanent. Some people are saying now, well, it's the murex, um, which is a snail which provides the purple, and we'll talk about that in the next color when we get to the purple. Only if you process it in the sunshine, it will make this indigo color. The other thing which is said about it is that it resembles a sapphire stone, which is the throne of Yahweh. And so it is an important connection between the physical world and the spiritual world. And we see in Exodus 24.10, And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. Also in Ezekiel 21, in Ezekiel 126, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above it. So both these descriptions of the throne of Yahweh uh, express this sapphire color. An interesting thing about the word tehillet it's, is that it is the word kol surrounded by tavs. The word kol is variously translated as all or every or everything. And we talked about this a little bit in the Aleph Tav series. Genesis 3.17 And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thou, thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Call ye Genesis 30, 33. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come from my hire before thy face. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown sh among the sheep that shall be counted stolen. With me, uh, Jacob, trying to make some agreement with Laban about his wages. Exodus 35.5 Take ye from among you an offering to Yahweh, whosoever is of a willing heart. Let him bring it an offering of Yahweh, gold, silver, and brass. Genesis 1.31 And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So this idea of all and everything is wrapped up in this word, call, which appears at the center of tchelet. We see that the uh, word call comes from the two middle letters of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, and it is therefore correlated to the Aleph Tav, meaning 
everything, and you can uh, listen to more about that in the Olive Top series. We see that just as the Olive Tav represents Yeshua, so does the all in all. 1 Corinthians 15, 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Colossians 3.11 Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Messiah is all and in all. We've also talked in other places about how the Tav is used grammatically uh, as a prefix and suffix. And in both cases, that Tav refers to a verb that has something to do with you, the second person. So we see um, from Genesis, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, lo tocha. You will not eat it. You should not eat it. It's the, the future tense, the imperfect, what we consider the future to eat. And specifically, Adonai is talking to Adam. and He says, you will not eat of it. Why? Because in the day you eat of it, mot tamut, you will die a death. So that is the prefix tav. Uh, and then later, uh, uh, we see the suffix tav, ula adam amar ki shamata lakol ishtecha, because you listened. You know the verb shama, that tav at the end. I don't know, I was talking to Adam. He says, you listen. So in both cases, the tav as a prefix and a suffix refers to you, the second person. And we see that in fact Messiah should be in you. John fourteen twenty. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Yeshua is saying that he and the Father should be in us. Colossians one twenty seven to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Messiah in you, the hope of glory. The hope of the glory is that the call, the all in all, is in you, between the two tops. Next time we'll go on to another color. In the meantime, Tassimita inayim al hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom. Oh